Hey there, 302. I'm Jackie Ferris. Got an ax to grind? Maybe a little pent-up frustration? No worries. We're at Battle Axe in Newark. The 302 is getting ready to hit the target. Hey there, 302. We are at Battle Axe in Newark and we're summoning our inner Viking with a little axe therapy. What exactly does that mean? Well, you're about to find out. I'm joined by the owner of Battle Axe, Mike Evans. Mike, thank you so much for allowing us to come on in. No worries, anytime. So let's start in the beginning, the history of the axe. There's a lot of very interesting history that goes all the way back to the Vikings. Actually, long, long before then, too. It was, a, it was actually a prehistoric tool that they used, either uh, like flint napped uh, stone or just regular stone that they would grind down. And they would use it either in the hand or it eventually uh, tied to a handle, kind of like we have now. And eventually, uh, around, I would say, Bronze Age or mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. it turned into a metal head on, uh, on, on a handle. Now we have one um, in front of us here. Now, a lot of people at home would say, what's the difference between an ax and a hatchet? Typically it's the length of the handle and shape of the head or size of the head. Uh, the head of a hatchet is usually a lot lighter because it's meant to be a one-handed tool or in some cases a weapon. Um, and it's, like I said, they usually don't, you would have one blade on it. They call it a single bit head instead of a double bit head because the length of it would point a blade basically right at your head while you're using it and mm -hmm. that's not usually safe. Um, but uh, hatchets are typically about 17, 18 inches long with a lighter head on about 1.25 pounds to two pound head and used for chopping wood with one hand basically for like kindling and just a small backpack usable tool. So the axe therapy uh, started a long time ago. Long time 2006, ago. Yeah. right? 2006 is when is when our neighbors to the north uh, battle actually started uh, backyard axe throwing league. Uh, we started with a, just a couple friends in this gentleman's backyard, and it went from probably about 10 or 15 people to a couple hundred very quickly. He he realized he had something bigger. Uh, on his hands than just, you know, the standard backyard gathering. So he, you know, mustered up a, some money and friends and they bought a location and it's all been uphill and downhill from there, so. It spread like wildfire, Pretty right? much, yeah. There's, you can find one of these in just about every country, almost every city across the globe now. Uh, recently went to Ireland and found three of them. Wow. So, yeah. So how did you get into this? I've always been into uh, crazy backyard sports like archery and knife throwing, axe throwing, tomahawks, uh, things like that. So this was sort of a natural progression for me. And um, when I realized that no one was doing this in Delaware, I just jumped at the chance to, uh, to try to bring the sport to Delaware and also, you know, be the first. So, so tell us a little bit about the facility here. So uh, we have about a 7,000 square foot uh, throwing facility. Uh, we have 10 lanes in here uh, with just 20 targets and we can fit 10 people per lane in here uh, at a time so we could probably do about 100 people over a two hour, two hour span mm -hmm. in the facility. Said, this is the only one in Delaware? We're not the only one, we're the first. The first? We're the first. So you're kind of like leading the way as Pretty much, were. pretty much. We are, we're actually the first and only IATF uh, facility in Delaware. We're actually the only league in Delaware as well. So you have uh, folks from all walks of life that come in and talk, talk to me a little bit about you know the, the exhilaration of throwing an Absolutely. axe. How would you describe that for the people at home they're like oh my gosh that's cool I want to check that out. There's really nothing like the first time you throw an axe and stick it in the in the wood. I've, I've had people scream, jump up and down, you name it, I have all kinds of reactions. 
Uh, we've had an 80 year old grandma in here who stuck three or four axes and was absolutely excited. She loved it. She wants to come back and bring her friends. So it's really, it's, it's very exhilarating. It's very exhilarating. And that's one of the things that we pride ourselves on here. We teach axe throwing. So when you come in and you spend time with us, you get a coach for the entire hour or two hours that you're here, or three hours, it's up to you. Uh, and that coach or, my, or myself will teach you exactly how to stick an axe. Well, I know that while people are excited about it, you know, it's new, it's different, we're just coming off of Game of Thrones and other television shows that are use axe and they're, and they're exciting, but some people might be a little nervous. They might be like, is it safe? You know, how do you, how do you teach someone to do it safely? That's exactly why we have someone with you the whole time, to make sure you're safe. And we start the very beginning of the hour with a, a safety orientation. We show you how to hold the ax, how to hand the ax over or stump the ax. Um, you, we make sure everyone has closed toed shoes. There's no tomfoolery or, uh, or anything crazy going on. It's just uh, very safe. It's actually a very safe sport. If you, if you looked into it, there's very minimal accidents and we haven't had any here. Uh, and we've had probably over 8,000 throwers. I think more than that actually, but yeah, now speaking Close of enough. sports, when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit about the leagues and how you can get involved. We'll be right back. I'm Carrie at the Rockwood Museum, and we're keeping history alive here in the 302. Welcome back. We're talking about axe therapy, and you can do this um, as a sport. Yes. Talk to me about the yes. leagues that you have. As I said before, we are members of the IATF, the International Axe Throwing Federation. Uh, they give us a whole book of rules and regulations to follow, and we have leagues. We do probably four or five leagues uh, a year. Uh, we try to do one every season. They're eight weeks long. Mm -hmm. uh, you throw for seven weeks of just regular tournaments, uh, and we score everybody. It's basically everybody against each other. And then that eighth week is a very grueling double elimination tournament. Very grueling. Um, they've changed the rules a little bit uh, lately, uh, and it kind of leads you uh, to throw more, mm -hmm. of course, like the, the, the actual rounds. There's usually three rounds of throwing with five throws per, per turn. So you get three, three rounds actually, so th uh, five throws per round. Mm -hmm. And it's usually 15 throws for that match. What they've done is now instead of you throw uh, three times against each other, sometimes you'll throw five or seven times against each other. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot, a lot harder, a little more grueling. Now, you had said that you have someone as old as 80 years old, but what's the youngest? The youngest that I know of um, is uh, probably around seven or eight. I think she started when she was six, and she's over there. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll probably get to see her throw in a little bit. So what can you expect if you want to sign up, you want to get involved? Because it seems like it'd be really good exercise. It, it is. It's uh, everyone, you know, any time of the year, we're all sweating. Uh, everybody's throwing uh, for the full two or three hours that you're here. It depends on what league you join. Mm -hmm. uh, we usually have two. We have a beginners and like an intermediate advanced. Uh, we may actually segment that into three uh, later on. So we have Midgard and Asgard right now, which mm -hmm. is Midgard being the uh, intermediate or novice, and then Asgard being the pro level. Uh, and these guys, they score usually 75, 78, per match and they're they're doing really well. So what are, um, when you're looking at the targets, um, it's different than the traditional target. Talk to me a little sure. bit about the scoring and what you've got. Okay, so what we have is a, a standard three ring target for the IATF. Uh, the, middle, the middle of it's the black line is five. The outer ring, or the, sorry, the middle ring is red and that's three points. Then the blue ring is one point. We also have what they call clutches at the tops of the target on each side. Our clutches are skulls, because we're Viking themed, so why not? Um, but those are worth seven points, and you can only throw for those on your fifth throw per turn. Wow. So yeah. how do you get to where you're skilled enough to hit the skulls, where you can aim? Lots and lots of practice. 
and these guys do it all the time. I've had at least th four leaguers uh, that have been with me from the beginning when we started who now can call it and hit it almost every time. So is it like a once a week kind of thing that you come and... Yep. Yeah. yeah, we do uh, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and then Sunday in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, the Wednesday night and Sunday night are both Asgard leagues, so they're, they're the, the pro-level leagues that uh, we hopefully will have throwing, uh, hopefully have one or two members in Canada for the, uh, for the championship. Oh, nice. Yeah, they do a championship once a year in March, or February, March. Yeah. So we're hoping, uh, hoping to have a couple guys up there for that. So how do you, do you just show up or do you have to register? Or? Yeah, you register. Uh, it costs $120 uh, to throw for eight weeks, which is kind of a bargain. Uh, normal throwing is $25 per hour. So if you were to pay for every week, it would cost you $200. So you're really getting a bargain for the, for the league. And what we do also is we throw in uh, some very heavily discounted practice time. And then if you come in on your league day to throw, you get free practice time. So it's kind of an incentive to, to get you in here a little bit more because mm. what you need to hit the skull is practice, for sure. So there's going to be a lot of folks out there that are going to be like, I just want to do it once or twice and you know maybe bring a couple of my buddies, it's my birthday, whatever. So you do parties as well. Yes, we do birthday parties, bachelor parties, divorce parties. We do <laughs> all kinds of parties. Uh, we do corporate events. Um, we've had, I think the biggest corporate event we've had so far is 40 or 50 people through here yeah. in a day. Um, and they'll usually book that like for two in the afternoon and I'll have someone here uh, to teach everybody how to throw or two or three people here running the, sh running the show. And, uh, and they always have a good time. Yeah. Actually, we've had one company come back about, about five or six times now. I can imagine it really gets everybody involved and, and a lot of camaraderie, just cheering it really as is. somebody, yeah. yeah. It, there's tons of camaraderie, especially in the leagues, because you're here every week with these guys and everybody's hanging out and they'll go out afterwards sometimes, hit happy hour, mm -hmm. things like that, and uh, you know, it's tons of fun. It's tons of fun and it's very therapeutic. Well, I'm looking forward to trying it myself. So awesome. when we come back, I'm going to uh, get a lesson on how to uh, throw an axe. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Gerald Chavis, and I'm swinging and bebopping with the 302. Welcome back. We've got the axes, and now we, I just need to know how to throw them. So um, what we have here are uh, the standard axe that we throw with, mm -hmm. and also the tiebreaker axe is basically what this is called. So if you were to score the same as your opponent in a given round, you would have to throw. Now sometimes it's a round, sometimes it's a match. It depends on what format you're throwing in. Yeah. If it's a double elimination tournament, it's gonna be your round. Then you have to throw the big axe. And this is, this is a lot heavier and longer than this yeah. one, obviously. I think you're safe. I don't think okay. you're going to have to throw that axe tonight. <laughs> no worries. So how do you do this? So how we, what we teach here is three different throws. We mm -hmm. teach a single hand or a one-handed throw mm -hmm. over your shoulder, mm -hmm. a two-handed throw over your head, mm -hmm. and an underhanded throw, um, which actually all three of those are legal in the IATF. Okay. okay? So what I usually start with is the one-handed throw. Okay, and it depends on how, you're, how comfortable you are with mm -hmm. it. You can try them both, but I suggest either the two-handed throw or the one-handed throw, okay? okay? So the one-handed throw looks like this. Uh, I actually take a big step when I throw, but you don't have to. I can show you how to throw from the black line and just take a little step and still stick it, okay? So but how I throw is, uh, I, I always aim, point this basically right at the bullseye, mm -hmm. ax right over my shoulder, kind of like I'm back scratching, mm -hmm. And I take a big step forward and then throw right at the ball. Like release, like right up here? You always want to release kind of at eye level. Uh, if you go too high, you won't go over the target, but you'll hit high. And then I have to get a ladder to get the axe down. <laughs> That's okay, I'll get it for you. Thank Can you, you give me a demonstration? Sure, okay? absolutely. Okay. So like I said, I take a big step and it looks just like this. Nice. Did you see that bullseye? And of course, there are etiquette rules. You have to wait for the, everybody to come back True. across. If there was another thrower here, I would throw my axe, and then I would stop. I wouldn't cross the red line. Okay. 
and I would wait for them to throw, and then we would both go get our axes. Okay, so, okay. all right, so I start here. So what I would, I would actually, let me show you the two-handed throw too. Okay, okay? show me the two-handed throw. Um, Cause I might start you off with that one. Okay. Okay, so the two-handed throw I actually throw from up here. Mm-hmm. Right about here, again, two hands. I always do hand over hand. Okay. You can do hand on top of hand, hand on top of hand, hand under, whatever you're comfortable with. I throw it like this, right over my head. Again, straight at the bullseye, okay? A little bit of a step, I lean in and I throw. Looks just like this. <laughs> Excellent. Step up so to step the black the line. line. Yep, right about there. And what I want you to do is just take a little step with your left. My left foot? Yeah, whichever foot you're comfortable with. If you want to go with the right, you can go with the right. So just take a little step, lean in, and throw it right at the uh, bullseye. Oh, here we go. That was good. terrible. That's okay. That's okay. We'll get you there. That was still good. You hit blade first, which is easier All right, is to there, adjust. You, you, is there a way to like put more thrust behind it or um, is it just yeah, to, you, you get to used to it? Yeah, you a little harder. But I think you're in good shape. What I would actually say is start from right where you're standing right okay. there. Okay. Same exact throw and I think we're going to stick it. Turn My it. husband would love to see this. Bullseye. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. Did you see it? <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait, stop. You I gotta get take a, picture? a picture. You need to get a, picture, get a picture with picture. that. Isn't that awesome? That felt really good. Isn't that awesome? Really, it was awesome. What about the, the one-handed throw? How do the I do that? The one-handed throw, um, basically, I would say dominant hand all the way okay. to the bottom of the, the axe. All the way to the, the bottom. bottom of the handle. Okay. And again, you want to keep everything in line. Keep your elbow in. Elbow in. You know, if you cross your elbow out, you'll turn the ax, and it's really hard to stick it this way because the grain of the wood goes straight up and down. Okay. And it's easier to stick. Okay. Okay. So keep everything in, in line. Okay. And what I actually do is, like I said, I take a big step, but you don't have to. Like right about here? Yeah. So I would say step up where you were before. Okay for the two-handed throw, right about there. Okay. And I would step with my left foot just a little bit toward the black line as you're throwing, okay? So we're okay. gonna bring it back over your shoulder. Okay. Like you're, and line up, and then take your step and just lean in and, and throw, throw right it. at that bullseye, yep. All right. You got this. Perfect. That was awesome. That was awesome. Thank you so much. How did that feel? I really enjoyed it, it was awesome. awesome. Very cool. We'll Excellent. be right back. wondering what happens to the targets, five bucks a bundle for your fireplace. That'll do it for this episode of the 302. We leave you now with a 30 crew behind the scenes taking a whack at the axe. Until next time, I'm Jackie Ferris. We'll see you on the 302.